Hey, what's up guys? So very soon I'm going to be recording and uploading a No Man's Sky permadeath difficulty survival series. But before that, I thought I'd share with you five tips and tricks on how to really enjoy the game and kind of cheat a little bit and just get the most out of it really. Now, when I do upload my permadeath survival series, I will have rebranded my channel by then. So I might be under a different name at that point. So make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. That way, when my name changes, you'll still be able to find the videos very easily and watch the entire series. So let's get on with the tips and tricks. Now, tip number one, milestones. Now, this is kind of one and two because I'm going to talk about the milestones and then there's two in particular that I really want to talk about. So you've got the milestones. I absolutely recommend just absolutely flying through them as quick as possible because then that way when you do come across the anomaly in space you can then just get all the rewards as quick as possible and it really progresses you through the game very quickly. It doesn't affect the actual storyline so it's not like you're going to be rushing that. It just helps you to upgrade your stuff a lot quicker and get like the V1, the V2 and the V3 passes. So I absolutely recommend doing the milestones as quickly as possible. Now the first one I want to talk about is the planetary zoology. Because this is one that I got stuck on for ages. As you can see I've now completed it. But for this one it's discover all species on 10 planets. So I'm on this planet over here. I'm not going to try pronouncing it. I don't know the name of it. My brother discovered it so that's why it's not come up that I discovered it. It's from where we've been playing together on this game. But as you can see, I've only discovered 15 out of 16 species. So I've not actually been able to do it on this one. But what you want to do is try and find planets like this, where there's just one species. Once you've done that, when you go to milestones, it will still say zero. It won't actually count it. Now, this is the bit that I was getting annoyed with, because I was sure that I had loads of them done. But for some reason, it won't count in it. But if we look quickly, if I click back on that one, I've got this nice gold paw up here on this one. That's because you actually have to tick that before it counts towards the milestones. So once you've discovered all the species, this symbol up here will actually be in silver. All you have to do is go over it, hold select, and then it will turn it gold, and that's when it will count as a milestone. Whereas with the other ones, like the on-foot exploration one where it's just walking distance, that will just count as it ticks over. Whereas with the planetary zoology, you have to make sure to select that silver paw print and turn it gold for it to count. So that was tip number one. Definitely make sure to follow that one, otherwise it won't count. Tip number two. Now this one is also a milestone, and this is the extreme survival milestone. Now, for this one, you have to survive a certain amount of souls on extreme worlds. Now, extreme worlds are any of the worlds where when you land, down in the bottom left, it will come up with writing in red. Just any one of them has to be red, and that will be an extreme world. Extreme worlds are most common in green star systems. Now, normally, in just a standard ship, that requires you to have an emerald drive to be able to get there. But quite early on into the campaign, you do get your own freighter for free. And the good thing about the freighter is it can travel to any star system, no matter what colour it is, using just its standard hyperdrive. So that's the easiest way to do it, is take that, go to a green star system, find an extreme world. So this is why I'm now actually in space, is so I can show you down in the bottom left where it will come up and show you the red writing. So let's just quickly go down. I already have my setup here for completing this milestone. This is how I did it. So if we go down, and if we just go land right next to where I've got my base, once we eventually get there, so as we come down and land, oh, there we go, put the ship down. Now when I get out of the ship, you can see down in the bottom left, it's got the Sentinels are hostile, and that is the one that's in red. Now, it can be weather, it can be anything like that. As long as one of those are in red, it will be considered an extreme world. Now, there's multiple ways to do this one. The way that I did it was to build a base computer, just put down a building, put down a door, and then all you have to do is go inside, once I can get in, and you just have to stand here, for hours. Now, I think to max out from 0 to 10 on the milestone, 
you have to stand here for eight hours. So what I did, I just left my computer on and I just let it play through while I was watching Netflix and other things like that. And I just let it go through and build up. But what I will say is it doesn't work if you are in the pause menu like I am now, if you are in your ship or if you are in an exocraft. So you have to be outside the pause menu and outside of a vehicle for it to count. So that's why I built this base and did this. Now, another way to do it is if you've got an economy scanner on your ship is scan for a trade outpost. So if there's a trade outpost, you could just go stand on there and it will count. Just anywhere that you can be safe where sentinels or animals or weather can't hurt you. Just make sure you're there, leave it on and let it play through. And that's the easiest way to do this milestone. Tip number three. So for this one, we've had to come back to my main base because this is where my refiners are. So this is going to be cloning resources. Now, this is a cheat, but it is so handy if you can't be able to go out and keep farming all of the time to get all your stuff. So this is why we need our refiners. Now, if you haven't unlocked the large refiner, then you can do it with the small portable refiner. So I'm going to show you it on here first. So what you need to do is come into here. Actually, before we do that, I'll show you my inventory so you can see what's here and what's not. So as you can see, I've got all of these spaces empty. You want to make sure that you have ferrite dust so that you can do this tip. So what we want to do is come into the refiner, make sure we put fuel in it. It doesn't matter which one we do. And you want to put in ferrite dust. And all you want to do is create one pure ferrite just one so you do that and then you take this ferrite dust from this side and you put it just anywhere you want so you can just put it away back in your exosuit and then you grab the item that you want to clone so out of all of these that we've got here i haven't really got much here but let's do it with the thermal protection module because as you can see from the little white bar that's maxed out so it will create a new slot so what you want to do is grab that put it into that slot there then come over and grab your one pure ferrite pick that up come over and just drop it on top of the item that you want to clone so we do that that will then get rid of your one pure ferrite and then once we pick up oh if we press b quickly once we pick that up we can put that back into our exosuit and then if i come out of it and go in as you can see i now have two of them that is how easy it is to clone. And just to prove that it works, we're going to do it again. Just go back into it, go into that, grab our pure fer grab our ferrite dust, make one pure ferrite, grab our ferrite dust, put it back in our exosuit, go down, grab the protection module, put it on there, go over, grab the pure ferrite, drop it on the protection module, put that back into our exosuit, come out, and if I go into it, I've now got three of them. It's that easy to clone things. Now, that was used in the portable refiner. It takes a while to do that. With the large refiner, it is a lot easier. Go into the large refiner, put the ferrite dust in there, come over, create one pure ferrite, that's created that. Then we take the ferrite dust and put it in the exosuit. Now you go over to the pure ferrite that you've created and you put that in the top slot on the left. We completely ignore the right from now on. It's just the left that we focus on. If we grab the next slot so we can put something in here and then we'll do it with the protection module still. You can put one in there. And then if we grab another one, we can put it in there. And then all you would want to do is bring the pure ferrite down on top of the second slot. So the first module that I've put in. Press B to come back to that. Then move that one up into the top. That then puts the pure ferrite back there. And that has now cloned one. So now what we could do is move that one down onto the bottom there. Grab that one and move that up onto there. And it's cloned it again. And we've still got all of the original stuff here. So it's not getting rid of anything. It was just purely cloning it. And that's it. Now what you don't want to do is grab that and put it back on there. 
because quite often that will then delete the pure ferrite and one of your protection modules. So you want to go back up to the top, put it on there, come back down, and all you have to do is just keep going through in that pattern, like that. And if we just go to there, so it's back at the start, put that back in the exosuit, put that back in the exosuit, that one back in. If we come out, I can then open up the inventory, and as you can see, I've now got loads of them. I don't actually need them, so I'm going to delete them. But that is just showing how easy it is to clone items. Tip number four. Now, tip number four also uses the cloning technique, but this one is for making a lot of money. So for this, we want to try and find, if I can, something of high value. So if we just go through my items, we'll go through and we'll just see if we can grab something really quickly that's worth a lot. That's only 21,000. I'm sure I have something that is worth quite a bit of money, but it might be on one of my ships because I have been dotting them around everywhere. So if we go over to my starship, I'm pretty sure, yes, that is. So if we just quickly go over to one of my multiple ships that I've got over here, all S classes, of course, and then we can quickly transfer it over. So as you can see, 497,000. So you want to just put that into your exosuit, fly back over to the refiners over here, Create your one pure ferrite again. If we just do that and that. Put the ferrite dust back into the exosuit. Put that up into there. And now what we want to do is grab that. Now, you can only have one in each slot, but it is worth 497,000 units. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that in there. We're going to move that down on top of there, which will clone it once. We then separate them again. Then, down here, now that I've cloned them, I can now select that, and there's another one there. So we can put that in. And we could do that. We could do that. And as you can see, it's messed up. This happens sometimes. If it does, don't worry about it. Just grab everything that you have, put it back into your exosuit, come out, make sure that it is still all there. So we've got three of them in there. It got rid of my one pure ferrite. So I'm quite glad that happened, so you could see what happens when it breaks. Click on that, ferrite dust in. Create one pure ferrite. Ferrite dust back into the exosuit. Pure ferrite over into slot number one. Then we can grab one of those. We can grab another one of those. Onto there. And as you can see, just keep cloning it again. Really nice and simple. You could just keep going through and through and through until everything is full up. I'm not going to do it because I've already cheated and made loads of money already. But as you can see, I've now got loads of these items that are all worth just under 500,000 units. Now, there are some items that you can get which are worth millions of units just for one of them. And for those, you want to go to a planet where you can find ancient bones or ancient technology. When you look at a planet and scan it in space, it will come up in yellow writing. And if we can, I'm hoping, I probably won't be able to find one here. No, nope, that's just an armor clam, but it kind of comes up as one of those yellow symbols when you're on the planet. Go over there, dig it up, and you'll be able to find one. It's worth a lot of money. You do that and clone it all. And then you basically become very rich. And as you can see, if I go into my inventory, up in the top left here, I currently have 237 million units. It is that easy to make money through this simple cheat. Obviously, if you don't like cheating, you don't have to do it. The main thing that I've actually used the cloning for is creating stacks and stacks. If we go over to my cargo, you'll be able to see of pure ferrite, magnetized ferrite, and different stuff to build bases with. So I can actually build multiple bases and as you can see, I've actually started work on a bridge just to see if I can build a bridge over to another island, which I believe I can do, but I need to put down another base computer so I can actually make it stretch across because obviously you do have a build radius from a base computer. So yeah, that's tip number four. It's kind of the same as number three, but is just all about making money. Go and find the ancient bones or the ancient technology 
clone that, go and sell it. What I will say is make sure you go somewhere that is wealthy. Go to a system that is wealthy and find a trade outpost. That is where you can maximize your profit when, when selling anything. That is the best thing you can do. And if you continue to sell loads of the same item, it does eventually reduce the value. I actually started selling one of my items for 1.5 million. By the time I finished cheating, I ended up selling each one for 20,000 units. So it does drop quite rapidly if you keep selling the same item. So I like that they put that into the game. It kind of stops you from cheating too much. But yeah, that's tip number four. Tip number five. Now, tip number five may seem like an obvious one, but it is pretty simple. If you die, grab your shit. Because when I first started playing this game, I died. And then before I could pick up my stuff, I died again. And that meant that the original grave where you can pick all your stuff up from disappeared and the new grave had nothing in it, which meant I lost everything. And when I say everything... I mean everything. I lost all my scanner. I lost loads of my stuff. All of these type of things on here. And because I couldn't work out how to get it back. Because I was a complete noob at the time. I decided to just restart the game completely. Start a new save. And just went from there. So my final tip. Tip number five. If you die, grab your shit. So, I hope you found these tips helpful. If you did, don't forget to drop that like, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. That way you won't miss out on any future awesome content. And also, with me rebranding and changing my name and logo, which will come in the future, you definitely don't want to miss the series of No Man's Sky on permadeath difficulty that I'm bringing out. So definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you won't lose my channel, and you don't have to keep searching my name to find it, because once you do search it, it won't be there anymore. Peace out.